Hey y'all, it's Ashley Bookishram and I am back with another video. As you can see from the title of this video, I am here to do another announcement. So I feel like I've been doing a lot of announcements so far this year, but it's okay. As you all know, this is the last week of January. We're coming up towards the end of January already, which is absolutely mind boggling, which means that starting February 1st, we are beginning Black History Month. We constantly have this conversation about Black History Month and its place in our community and that we should be reading Black books all throughout the year. But I think that February is a great time to honor are books by black authors that feature black characters and take place in different areas of the world so looking at authors and settings outside of a US and UK setting so there are a lot of different readathons and things taking place during February there is read so lit which has been happening since I believe I've even been a part of booktube in 2014 hosted by uh, Didi which it's great there's always a great group pick there is a black author romance readathon happening there is a black lit readathon happening over by um that's being held by the artisan geek there is a kind of black lit challenge that's happening over the crawl i think across a period of one week we only have to read one book and that is being done by erica and brie so there's a lot to choose from no excuses and not to pick up at least one book by a black author sometime this month however here today i am present to announce that I am going to be a part of a Blackathon, which is being hosted by Jesse over at Bowties and Books. They were kind enough to ask me this year if I would like to participate, and I definitely said yes. The overall theme for Blackathon this year is traveling and making a journey, both in the physical sense and also kind of not the physical sense. I thought that that was a great idea considering that we are still in the midst of a global pandemic. A lot of us have not had the opportunity to travel or do anything <laughs> very much. So, but yes, I am also here to say that I am leading team contemporary literature and nonfiction over here on YouTube. And I say specifically here on YouTube because Blackathon is happening across several different platforms so we have hosts that are here on YouTube. I, like I said, am hosting the contemporary literature and nonfiction team. Jesse is hosting the thriller and horror team and Lauren from the novel Lush is hosting the SFF team. There are also ways to participate over on Twitter if you follow Blackathon's Twitter page and then there are also ways to participate on Instagram. So each one of the teams actually has a host over on Instagram. Starla from Starla Reads, who has an amazing booktube channel that I absolutely love, is also hosting the SFF team on Instagram. For the contemporary nonfiction and literature team, we have Sins over Book of Sins, whose Instagram page I love, like so, 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 so love. I love Book of Sins. <laughs> Her Instagram page is just is beautiful. I absolutely love it. For thriller and horror, we actually have two hosts for that, and that is Chanel, who also has a wonderful booktube channel as well, and Nina. So I will make sure that everybody's information is down below. This is the first year that Blackathon is having teams which I think is fun because it challenges people. It's a little bit of competitive spirit, which I think is really, really cool. And I think that people have the opportunity to pick and choose from so many different prompts. And I am so happy that I got the opportunity to be a part of the contemporary nonfiction and literature team because we all know that I pick up anything. I, I am willing to pick up anything and everything. I don't discriminate against any genre, format, or anything like that but if I was to be truly honest with myself I do have a tendency to lean more towards contemporary realistic fiction non-fiction literary fiction that just seems to be where I read the most of not that that's the only thing that I read but I do read heavily in those areas so this is 
this is my vibe this is where this is where I work this is where I flow so I'm definitely happy to be a part of this team a couple of other things to point out there are a lot of different challenges and fun things going on here on YouTube on Twitter as well as Instagram here on YouTube there is going to be a seven day vlogging challenge that takes place from the 13th to the 19th I'm not going to go through all of the prompts for that challenge but what you can do is down in the description box I'll make sure I have all the information I am actually going to be participating in this and I will make sure that it's a week-long vlog because of the fact that daily vlogging for me it's going to be a little bit harder with my work schedule but it's something that I could do as a week-long video which I believe Jesse has said is kind of an option for everyone as well we are also going to be having a live show that's going to take place on March 1st at 8 p.m. CST time which is 9 p.m. EST time. I always get I always get a little nervous about stuff like this because I'm like am I really converting time the right way? Like anything dealing with numbers is just not my forte. I uh, just it's just it's just not a me thing. Over on Instagram there's a lot of different things happening. There are blackout dates in which black people no matter what shade of tone your skin is if you if you identify as black there are blackout days where you can post a picture of yourself. There are a week of Instagram challenges. There are movie watches that are happening. I'll make sure that I link all of that information down below. There is also going to be a writing contest where black emerging writers can send a very short story that follows along the lines of the Blackathon theme. If you are interested in writing a very short piece that follows the category of nonfiction literature or contemporary that would be submitted to me. My email address is down in the description box below. Remember that you must be a black immersion writer and it must follow the black a thon theme. There are prizes that will be awarded to those that win in the categories and if so if you wish your story will be entered into a google doc for others to see if we have your permission to do so. So what we're going to do now is go through the prompts for the contemporary literature and nonfiction. I'm going to read the prompts first and then I'm actually going to go through some books that are on my radar, books that you could possibly use as your own recommendation list. Some of these I have read, some of these I haven't read. I just like to give myself a plethora of options to choose from and I'm not going to go into too much detail about each one because this video would be just exceptionally long if I did that but I'll give you a brief description how it kind of fits into the theme and if I have read it before or not. I actually have one thing on this list that actually completes three of the four challenges which is pretty cool and, and each prompt I believe I have at least five or six books so about maybe 15 or so recommendations for you to choose from. Okay so the first prompt for contemporary literature and nonfiction is Maisie Card and I should have also probably said that all of these are based on black authors or books by black authors and the first one is Maisie Card a book that takes place over one character's lifespan or an intergenerational narrative. The second is Patsy Two queer characters embark on a journey together. Bonus points if it's a tangible journey such as a road trip. The third prompt is Nettie Accor for a disabled character embarks on a journey or book by a disabled black author. And the fourth prompt is a group book which is The Secret Lives of Baba Seji's Wives. So what I think is really really cool is the caveat which Jesse has put into place is that at least one of the books that we read must take place out of a US UK setting which is great because it forces us to explore the diaspora a little bit more than just picking up something that we are used to picking up which is a habit of mine that I really really do need to break. 
Okay, so the Maisie card prompt. So for the first one that I have in here, I was thinking, okay, intergenerational story. What have I read that's intergenerational and has the theme of travel or journey? And this one, I was definitely like, I think this fits. And that's Home Going by Ya Jesse, which it's been a while since I re read this one. So I may actually pick this one up because I need to do a reread. And it takes place in a partly in a non-US UK setting. Part of the book, the beginning of the book, it takes place in 18th century Ghana and it focuses on two half sisters and how they have two very diverging lives. One ends up married and lives in Ghana and her children and children sh children all live in Ghana and then we have another sister who ends up getting sold into the slave trade which technically is a journey that she has to make and then we follow her children children's children while they're living in the u.s so i think that this one actually is a perfect fit because it knocks out so many different requirements that we're looking at for this prompt the next one that i have is the vanishing half by Britt bennett and this one follows two sets so meaning that we follow these sisters and then we follow their children so I think that that is enough to be intergenerational and we are following the sisters over the course of their entire life so that also works for this prompt and this is a journey in two different ways. This is a journey in the sense that there are characters that physically move from one town to different parts of the U.S. and then there's also kind of this life journey that our characters make in coming to terms with their race and how they present their race and how they identify as black or how they don't identify as being black. So this one also was kind of an easy pick for me to kind of figure out because of the fact that it hits so many different aspects of the prompt. The next one that I have is Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson and this is another intergenerational story and it starts off with a young girl who is about to have her coming of age get together and she's wearing a dress that originally belonged to her mother so we travel back and we figure out why her mother never had her coming of age get together and then we follow her mother's parents and it's very very interesting because it the time jumps make it a little bit more complex it's not so linear per se but it is an intergenerational story that heavily focuses on what happens when we make decisions and how that changes us and it changes how we raise those who come after us and this is also both a book that looks at a physical journey where our characters are moving to different places in the U.S. but also a spiritual journey in trying to figure out who we are as people. So this one also was kind of an instantaneous. I was like oh yeah this definitely would work for this. So the next book of course is specifically focusing on the name of the prompt which is Maisie Card and Maisie Card release These Ghosts Are Family. And I have not read this one, but this one is a intergenerational story because it focuses on a father who makes a decision that kind of changes everything for the entire family. And it takes place from post-colonial Jamaica up into present day Harlem. So we have that physical journey aspect that is going on there. And this one also takes place partly outside of the US and UK. The next one that I have on this list that I am very excited personally to possibly pick up is Ghana Must Go by Taye Selassie and this one is about a family that must come back to Ghana after the their father passes away so this one also has an intergenerational story where I believe the first part of the book actually focuses specifically on the father and the time in Ghana and then the children actually end up migrating to the US and I believe also the UK so I'm sure there's going to be some conversation about migration and how it impacts this family. This does take place partly in a non-US UK setting because part of this story takes 
takes place in Ghana. The next one that I have actually fits three of the prompts and that is Bingo Love by T. Franklin. So Bingo Love is a book that focuses on two characters and follows them through the entirety of their life which fits the Macy card prompt. It is about two queer characters making a journey together both in terms of trying to navigate their relationship and also physically making journeys together. So it fits into the Patsy prompt and this is a book that was written by a disabled black character. So T. Franklin does identify as being disabled. So technically if you wanted to you could pick up Bingo Love and it would fulfill all three prompts outside of the group book. And the last one that I have for the Maisie card, Maisie card prompt is The Warmth of Other Suns by Isabel Wilkinson. This is a nonfiction book about the Great Migration. So that right there is technically the travel aspect of it. And I believe that while this is not specifically about just one family. I think it follows three specific characters if I'm not mistaken. I haven't read this one yet. I think that in terms of intergenerational we could look at this one as how the Great Migration has impacted generations which does make it an intergenerational kind of narrative but I did want to include a couple nonfiction on this list because we are team contemporary literature and nonfiction and this one does fit into the first prompt. So the next prompt that we have is the Patsy prompt and the first book that I have on the list for the Patsy prompt which is to focus on two queer characters that make a journey and I have the stars and the blackness between them first and this one is not going to be necessarily about the two queer characters making a physical journey together. I think they are and I haven't read this but this is going to be about them making a journey and trying to navigate their relationship and getting one of the characters Characters, Audrey acclimated to living in the US because they move from Trinidad to the US and I think it's just about them kind of helping each other. There is a element in here I believe in which one of the two girls ends up getting sick and they have to navigate that so they are making a journey together in terms of navigating their relationship and navigating society and trying to help each other kind of get acclimated to their situations that they have going on. So like I said I haven't read this one yet but I think it's one that I definitely need to pick up because I've heard nothing but great things about this one. Of course because this is the Patsy prompt I will <laughs> include Patsy by Nicole Dennis Ben which I have not read Patsy yet. I read Nicole Dennis Ben's other book Here Comes the Sun which which was a very intimate look at some things, some cultural things that were happening in Jamaica and I absolutely love that book. Definitely a dark book and Patsy is actually a book that focuses on a mother and daughter. Mother who leaves her daughter behind to move to New York I believe and when she leaves her daughter behind we're getting these two different narratives of I guess how they are living their lives and I believe that the daughter is having some issues of trying to figure out why she was left behind. From reviews that I have seen of this one and of course Jesse has chosen the prompts this one does have LGBT themes involved in it. I'm not sure how but of course if you just pick the books by the names of the prompt they will work for the prompt itself. And the next one that I have is a romance for those of you who follow me that are romance readers that are looking for romance books that fit these prompts. That Could Be Enough by Alyssa Cole fits this prompt and this one is about two black queer women living in post-revolutionary U.S. It kind of follows of course the theme of Hamilton. Hamilton doesn't make an appearance in this book and it focuses primarily on these two black women and this is not so much about a physical journey but this is a spiritual journey that the two of them make together navigating their lives and their relationships and trying to help each other 
defeat their fears. It's one that I really enjoyed last year and found it very very heartwarming and charming and definitely would recommend it for this part. So the next one that I have actually does not come out until towards the end of February but it's one that I have a pre-order for the audiobook in and that is Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers and like I said this one doesn't come out I believe until like that final week in February but I am anticipating listening listening to this listening I can't talk today listening to this one anyway and this is about a young woman 28 year old young woman by the name of Grace who has just completed her PhD she decides to celebrate goes to Vegas gets married to another woman and basically scraps all of her plans and journeys from Portland with this woman and they moved to New York so there definitely already is that physical journey and it features two queer characters and I'm sure there's going to be some other non-tangible um type of journeys that occur between the two of them especially because this character seems to be like very like things in order life together and by making this move alone by marrying a woman in Vegas and picking up everything and moving to New York with her seems to be something that is not her norm so <laughs> I think there's going to be a lot more discussions but I'm really 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 looking forward to that one. So the next one that I have on here is Treasure by Rebecca Weatherspoon which features two queer women who one ends up I believe she's going to her sister's bachelorette party and she ends up meeting Treasure who is a stripper and there was nothing going on at that point but then they meet again and then that's when Alexis realizes that Trisha whose stage name is Treasure is the same stripper that she saw at her sister's bachelorette party and they end up falling in love and from the description there seems to be some navigating and journeying of them trying to get past their baggage that they have had prior to meeting each other some things that of course Alexis has been through and then there seems to be some elements with Treasure or Trisha being a stripper that I think that they have to kind of navigate and kind of figure out together so going on that romantic journey with one another which I'm excited to check out this one I don't think I've read a Rebecca Weatherspoon book yet so I don't think I have so this may end up being my first and the last one that I have on this list is Pink Slip by Katrina Jackson this one actually is a polyamorous relationship which is perfect for the prompt and they actually end up going to Serbia so we actually have a physical journey so that will get the bonus prompt so if you're looking for one with the bonus prompt of actually physically going somewhere outside of Honey Girl, Pink Slip is uh, another one to check out and I have not read Pink Slip yet but I am excited to get to that one as well if I get to it. Okay so the last prompt is a book that features a disabled character embarking on a journey or a book about or a book written by a disabled black author. So the first one that I have on this list is Out of My Mind by Sharon Draper. This is a middle grade book that focuses on a main character that is disabled. She has cerebral palsy and she is actually journeying, embarking on a journey to transition into a mainstream classroom. So it's a huge challenge for her because everyone assumes that she's incapable of doing anything that she's not smart because she can't communicate so the entire book is written from her internal dialogue and it is the most fascinating book that I have read that I I absolutely loved it it made me choke up at a lot of different parts but it's about Melody trying to navigate and journey on attempting to prove in some ways that she can help her teammates make it to the National Quiz Bowl competition and that she is not 
stupid just because she has a disability and she can't communicate in the ways that everyone else may communicate so this is one that I also read last year that I really really enjoyed. The next one that I have is a nonfiction book and it is The Pretty One by Kia Brown. Kia Brown is a disability rights activist. I think she is known most known for the viral hashtag that she created which was disabled and cute and this book is a collection of short stories in which she discusses what it's like to be both black and disabled living in a country that is solely focused on being able-bodied and white and i think that this one is going to tackle some conversations about how she's had to journey and navigate creating a space for herself and so many others and also I think the conversation about the intersectionality between being disabled and being a part of a minority group especially being disabled and black. The next one that I have and I'm gonna look over to the side because it's a longer title it's called Habin, The Deafblind Women Who Conquered Harvard by Habin Gurma and it is about Habin's journey in literal physical journey in being deaf and blind and navigating the world like visiting so many places. I think she's responsible for creating a lot of innovative things. I mean down to non-visual ways to do salsa, non-visual ways to operate a handsaw. She also created a text to braille communication system that created a new way for people to connect with each other which I think is absolutely fascinating. So this one is definitely high 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 on my radar because it really is about her journey and I keep saying the word journey but there's such an emphasis on journey within this entire readathon but it really is her journey and from being super isolated to kind of taking the world stage. The next one that I have on this list is Will It Weep For Me and this is by Mary Nana Amadon Kwa and I'm hoping that I'm saying that last name right. This is a black woman's journey through depression so this specifically focuses on a non-visible disability and how Mary had to fight to come out of depression. This one is probably going to resonate with me very very closely because I have battled with depression for a very very long time and it's one that is often hard to really explain because a lot of people don't see it as a disability and it is. It's a non-visible disability and it really does impact the way that you function in your personal life, your work life, just it really does take a toll on a lot of things so I'm very very much so this one is high 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 on my radar. Of course you could always read the book that inspired the name of this prompt which is Broken Places in Outer Space is Finding Creativity in the Unexpected by Nettie Corfor which talks about her time in which she experienced paralysis and the creativity that came out of that experience. And the last one that I have for this prompt is The Bite of the Mango and this is by Mariatu Kamara and this takes place outside of the US UK setting. It is about their experience growing up in Sierra Leone and how they were brutally attacked and how they actually ended up losing both of their hands in their journey in attempting to navigate life after that attack and just the different phases that they went through until they ended up in Toronto. Okay y'all so those are the all the books that are on my radar for the prompts for the team contemporary literature and non-fiction team. Join us Remember that the group book is The Secret Lives of Baba Seji's Wise, which if you read that one, that also takes care of the book that takes place outside of the US and the UK. I will make sure that I leave all of the information down in the description box below. Our team is awesome. Hop in, join, 
if you have any other recommendations that I have not talked about or any other books that you think would fulfill those prompts leave them in the comment box below that way other people can check them out as always if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content from me click the subscribe button hit that bell for notifications if you're looking for ways to follow me on social media and to support this channel the links will be down in the description box and I'll be back with another video soon